Hey guys, and welcome to the third video in our series. Um, in this video, we'll be looking at numbers and strings. And the first thing you should know about numbers and strings um, is that in Python, number, well, the numeric type and the string types are immutable. So this means that the numbers and strings cannot be changed. So for example, if you should assign a number, a specific number to a variable, then you cannot directly change that number, but you can always um, rebind a new number to that variable. And that old number will be there in memory until Python basically garbage collect, do its garbage collection and get rid of that object. So let's look at what I mean by this so let's say x equals 10 and y equal x all right so in this case what I was basically saying is that 10 is the object okay x is the variable in this line y is the object and not x but 10 y is a variable sorry and 10 is the object because what we did was we took the object of x since x is a variable we took the object which is 10 and assigned it or bind it to y so if we should call y then we see we get 10 but what if what if we change x so we say x uh, equals 11 uh, then you would naturally expect y to also equal 11 but since we bind the object of 10 to y then you will see that this won't be the case if we should call y. You see that y still equals 10. And that's basically what I meant when I said numbers and strings are immutable. So let's look at a string in this sense. So uh, let's say s equal Python, all right, let's put those in quotes. And T, let's bind that to language. All right, and then we will say U, let's make that equal to S. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna change S. So we're gonna say S plus equal T. All right, so what this did was to take S, add S to T, and then bind that new object s so what I did here where you have this plus and equal which um, would be uh, familiar to you if you come from other programming language but if you're new to programming then what I did was basically said s equal s plus t so this right here is the same thing as this up here just a shorter version all right so if we should call S, you will see that it says Python language. So we basically rebinded the new object to S, right? Um, if we should call U, you would see that it basically still equals to Python or still holds the object Python. So this is very useful. Um, that the strings are immutable so you make a change somewhere else but 
you don't affect the previous uh, variable. Um, we'll show you a couple ways later on where you can easily change what a variable is and so forth when it comes on to immutable objects but for now that's just the concept you have to get in terms of these being immutable all right so let's look at uh um some numeric type you know we already have the integer so we won't go too much into integer as you know integer basically um whole numbers like one um we can say two and if you ask python hey what's the type of x um you should definitely get that it's an integer the other one that we haven't looked at as yet is the boolean type so boolean is basically our true or false type and in terms of number it's one and zero and basically if we should say t equals true and f equals false and we say uh, let's call for t see that t is true and we ask python what's the type of t and it should tell you that it is a boolean right um, we will look into mm, so we basically covered integer and boolean so there's another one it's long it's basically an integer but it's not limited to the same same uh, number of digits like an integer so long is basically limited by the the memory available in your machine so you can basically as long as you have enough memory in your machine you can have that amount of uh the are the length of the decimals so you can go up to like a hundred decimals uh 200 decimals so it just depends what your limit is with the with your machine um we have uh, other um numeric type like float and we actually did go over float so float is let's say float is any a uh, number with like a decimal place so for example if we do that and ask python what's the type of g it should tell you that it's a float all right there there's another well float again is not very accurate um especially when you come to doing programs such as financial programs where um it's very very important that um calculations are done well you would want to use something like decimal uh the thing with decimal we have to import it see if that's still the case so we import decimal and then we basically say decimal dot decimal and then in here that's where we will enter our our figure so for example we'll say 3.33 and you will see that because of that you can see the exact um amount that it gives to this figure so decimal is way more accurate than float so you would want to play around with it you can again go to the python website and look at what and what you can't do with the decimal uh, objects so that's pretty much it on numbers or the numeric types uh, in terms of uh, strings 
which would be playing around a lot with let's see some stuff that we can actually do with our string type so previously we touched on strings before um, we'll just basically show you some stuff that you would need to know going further um, one thing to know is that string you declare a string object Alright, let's use um, something else. Alright, let's use S again. Alright, so string object are either declared with a double quote or a single quote. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, if we should say Python is great and we should use T and do the same thing in double quotes and we call s and t we should see that both of them are the same thing so you just declare a string using either the double quote or the single quote okay um, there are some times when you would have multiple lines of codes. You can easily do something like this. Do something like um, using uh, three quotations. And you can basically write a lot of stuff. So like this is... Uh, okay. It might be hard to do on the p on the console, but let's try again. All right. Yeah. All right. But um, practically, um, once you are doing this in say the actual program, you can basically go through a lot of lines without having to put each line in quotations so you can basically go down and just ensure that three quotations start the string and three quotation ends the string okay um, we'll also look at the escape characters so for example so what if you want to put a string or a quotation in a string and it's the same quotation so I'll show you what I mean by that so for example, let's say y equals um, he said let me say he said Python is great. So basically what we want to do is output he said and then we also want what he said in double quotations so if we should press that you see that we have some type of syntax error because python is thinking that this string ended here so everything here after this basically confused python because um they don't know what it is they don't know what this is saying because we intended for this to still be in a string but that's not what Python expect. So how would you do something like this? Well, there are actually two ways. You can say, you can put this in single quotes and say, he said Python is great. And if we do that, you see that it worked. Why? Because when you use a single quote, Python is looking for another single quote to to end that um to end that string object. So if you put a double quote in between, Python would accept that part of the string. Another way you can do this is by using an escape character. For example, we could say Z.
he said. And then here you would escape this by using the escape sign which is a backwards sl slash then you will put your quotation and you will say python is great then you will end it with another backslash and once you run this uh let's see print okay there it is so um once you print it on the screen you should see that it says python is great in double quotation even though we also use double quotation to to um, initialize that object of a string. All right, so the next thing we can do with strings are getting certain, uh, what would we say, certain stuff from it, like uh, the length, we can get uh, where certain letters are. For example, let's say we have H equal is a string. Okay, so let's say we want to find the length of H. We can say len H, and it should tell you that it has a length of 16. Alright, what if we want to see if there's a certain letter in H. All right, let's say we want to find out if there are any S in H. So we say something like S in H. And it should give us either a true or a false. So we ask it and it says true because there is a S in, in this string. But say something where there's not a letter there like f in h then you see it comes back to a false right we can also count how many of a certain character um is in that string so for example uh, h dot count and let's see, we want to find how many S are in that string. And you see, come back saying two, which is right. One, two. But you would say, well, this is an S, or this is a S. So why didn't this come back as three? That's because this is different from this. As you see, this is capitalized. So if we should do that same uh, function again and say capital S then you see it comes back as one all right we can also find out how many blank space is in the string so we can say h dot count and we'll leave this blank and hold on that's not what we intended to see all right yeah so we put a space there and it says three. And you can actually see that there are three um, spaces in this string. Um, you can see whether the string start with a certain character. So for example, we can check that if uh, that string start with a T and you see that it says true because it actually did start with a T. Um, there are a lot of other um, functions and methods that you can use with strings. Um, I'll list you to all these functions um, and methods. They're actually in the book, the Rapid GUI Programming with Python and Qt. 
Um, so you can again go and play with it because it will take a lot of time to list all these functions and method right here. So um, the next thing we want to go through is formatting. So in this case, say you're making a game and you ask the player to put in their name. So let's say name and we have player, right? And you want the program to say, well, hi, player. Then uh, you would do something like hi. But remember that the your program won't know the name of the player up front. So what we'll do, we'll put a, a string placeholder right here. So you say hi, string placeholder, which is the percentage sign and an S. So we basically say all right what would be put in the place of that string and all we need to say is the name right so if we should go ahead and press enter you see that it says hi player right and we can change the name again and say darren and if we go back and say this do the same thing then you see that it says hi Darren. So this is basically taking a string placeholder and assigning a string object to that placeholder. And we can do the same thing with numbers. So we can say, like a program, say pick a number and you say number equals five. You can have that output as your number is then but for the number um, the placeholder specifically integer we would use I alright and then we will put num and you see that it says your number is 5 we can actually do the same thing with a float so we say um number two equals seven point four five 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 and then we say your float is and for this placeholder we use a f all right so if we should assigned number two to this then you will say that your float oh we assign the number but you see that it did turn it into a float but it should be number two and you say seven four five five zero 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 so you see that it has a lot of um, decimal places so say we specifically need a certain amount of decimal place say example two then we can go ahead and say your float to two decimal places is and for this basically the same thing but you're going to use dot and the number of decimal place you want so it's percentage dot and in this case two F and we'll go ahead and assign that same num2 and you should see that it rounded off to two decimal places right and you can do this you cannot only use one placeholder you can basically let's try this use a multiple of them so let's say apples equal four um amount or let's say cost equal um, 10 
So we have four apples and the cost equal 10. So our program will basically say um, you have and then we'll put a integer placeholder you have apples which costs and we put another integer well let's make this a float because this will be in dollar sign so let's put this to 2 f and then let's put a dollar sign in front of it all right and but for this now because we have more than one uh, placeholder what we'll do is put this in a tuple so we'll put it's it's basically in order so the one that you put first goes to the first placeholder and the second one would go to the second placeholder and so forth so for this we'll say apples and costs and if you run that you should see that it says you have four apples which cost ten dollars so it is as simple as that so um, you can go ahead play around with it as much as possible um, see what you can get these string to output um, you can basically there's a lot as i say there's a lot of other stuff that you can do with strings uh like you can get the specific um character in a certain place like let's say for example t equal this is a string and you can say well what is in the position of three and you know in python three is basically four places because it starts from zero so it's one two no it's zero one two three so it should be an s so if we do that you see that it does say it's an s right so there are a lot of stuff that you can do with strings um we'll look more into it when we go down into the tutorial but for now these are the basic so again play around with it um see what you can't do uh, what you can do and um we'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about collections so we'll go over stuff like tuples lists um, dictionary stuff like that so I hope you learned a lot today and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching